Hi everyone, I am Dr. Wafa Ibadawi, a senior consultant histopathologist and head of pathology department, AKMICHKSA. I am going to talk about germ cell neoplasms of the ovary, immature teratoma. General background. Immature teratoma comprises approximately 3% of ovarian teratomas and 15 to 20% of all primitive germ cell tumors of the ovary. It is composed of embryonal immature as well as variable amounts of histologically mature tissues derived from all the three germ cell layers. It usually presents as a pelvic mass in children and adolescents. About 10% of cases are bilateral. Most patients have elevated serum levels of CA125 and two-thirds of patients have elevated serum alpha feed to protein. Gross appearance. Most immature teratomas are large, more than 8 cm, and have an irregular or ruptured external surface. This photo shows solid and cystic tumor with a heterogeneous cut surface, including cartilaginous and yellow fatty nodules, as well as prominent but otherwise indistinct solid areas. Not the multiple hemorrhagic foci. Please note that the tumor requires extensive sampling at the rate of one section per centimeter of the largest dimension for the diagnosis and grading of immature teratoma. Microscopic features. These two photos show immature teratoma consisting of primitive neuroepithelial cells that form small neurotubules. Immature tissues show large nuclei with vesicular, chromatin, mitosis, and apoptosis. Gliomatosis peritonei. A subset of tumors features extra ovarian glial deposits in the peritoneum, omentum, and all lymph nodes. The glial tissue can be completely mature. It does not affect the staging of the primary tumor. Or immature, it signifies advanced tumor stage. The deposits show micronodular growth pattern and are usually multiple and small, less than 3 mm. The glial tissue shows positive immunostaining for GFAB, glial fibrillary acidic protein, and SOX2 nuclear positivity. It is important to remember that gliomatosis peritonei containing only mature glial tissue by definition is considered grade zero teratoma. With rare exceptions, gliomatosis peritonei behaves in a benign fashion and should not be over treated. The presence of gliomatosis peritonei does not portend an adverse prognosis and requires a monitoring only, even if the deposits are immature, as they eventually mature and regress over time with chemotherapy. This image of an immature teratoma shows oligodendroglial cells surrounded by a sheet of 
primitive small round blue cells. WHO grading of immature teratomas. Grading is based on the number of low power fields, LPF, 4.5 millimeter diameter, containing immature primitive neuroepithelium in any one slide. The same method is applied to metastatic foci. Grade 1, 0 to 1 LPF of immature neuroepithelial tissue. In any one slide, the behavior is benign. Grade 2, 2 to 3 LPF of immature neuroepithelial tissue. In any one slide, the behavior is malignant. Grade 3, more than 3 LPF of immature neuroepithelial elements in any one slide, rare or no mature tissues, behavior is malignant. A two-tier grading system. It has a better inter-observer reproducibility than the three-tier degrading system. Grade 1 is a low-grade immature teratoma. Grades 2 and 3 are collectively referred to as high-grade immature teratomas. It is important to note that serum alpha fetoprotein elevation should prompt a thorough search for yolk sac elements. If yolk sac tumor is present, the tumor is classified as a mixed germ cell tumor. Prognosis and therapy. Grade 1 tumors are treated with conservative excision, followed by surveillance. High-grade tumors Grades 2 and 3, on the other hand, are treated with surgery, staging, and adjuvant chemotherapy, as their risk of metastasis is high, up to 80%. The 5-year survival rate for stage 1 tumors is almost 100%. Phenomenon of growing teratoma syndrome. Rarely extra ovarian implants of an immature teratoma undergo complete maturation and continue to slowly grow over time without an associated elevation in blood tumor markers. This phenomenon typically occurs within two years from the initial teratoma diagnosis. The treatment in these cases is surgical removal to prevent mass-related complications. These are the references. Thank you.